she said. Oh, welcome, welcome to Yo Soy <laughs> Neighborhoods Fresno. The move comes four days after the black space comment that provoked a firestorm. In an era of media consolidation and globalization, the PEG channels root our media in local communities, in local voices, and that is absolutely indispensable. A lot of people are able to get job, job training, information, just from using public access. This is about the arts. This is about accessibility. This is about transparency. Great youth media programs. Programs giving people second chances in being able to learn new skills. Peg stations give viewers critical information about their communities and offer an important platform for local residents. Peg channels connect us to our communities and they enrich our lives every single day of the year. The FCC should work for communities, not powerful cable companies. This battle is a lot like the fight for net neutrality. Net neutrality is really about every voice, no matter how small being heard. The same is true here with the PEG channels. The main threat facing media centers nationwide is that the FCC, the Federal Communications Commission, is going to redefine how we receive our funding. It will impact the people who we're trying to serve. They were actually paying for us in their cable bill. Um, and now all of a sudden the cable operator is taking their money, then deducting it from us. They cannot be in a position where they basically force the shuttering of peg channels all across our country. We need Congress to tell the FCC that they're out of bounds. It's pretty clear to me that the FCC is an agency that does the public's will begrudgingly. And it fits and starts. We're talking about supporting causes, charities, education, youth, seniors, democracy. This is not a left issue. This is not a right issue. This is an everybody issue. If you care about protecting local community access, television, raise your voices. Hi, hi everyone. Thank you for tuning in to Yo Soy Neighborhoods Fresno. We're running a little behind. We were out late last night at the Yo Market. We had a wonderful band of Fire on the Mountain. They gave us a wonderful time. We had lots of people out there dancing. Um, we have uh, quite a few of the vendors returning, so watch for it. Come down on July 11th to enjoy Yo Market. Today, uh, Here's my associate. Hey, I'm Mickey Addison. Glad to see you one more time. And uh, happy to be here. And again, I was a vendor. We had a wonderful time. Uh, I was selling this shirt in particular, Stay Woke. And you should do that. Um, so uh, plan on joining us next month. Today we have our, uh, the executive director of CMAC, Brian Harley. And uh, Brian. Hello. Tell us a little bit about your background here in Fresno. Sure. Yeah, I was uh, born and raised here in Fresno and uh, went to Fresno State uh, and graduated uh, with a degree in mass communication and journalism and lived in L.A. for a little while, but been mainly have lived my whole life here in Fresno. Wonderful. Now, yeah. what in the world drove you to get into this type of work? Yeah, well... Um, Hello. I, as a kid, I just had a love of uh, the video camera. So just always had the family camcorder in my hands and making little skits and stuff around the house with my younger siblings. And was just always attracted to uh, the sort of visual medium for storytelling. And it wasn't until you know I was in high school when um, 
you know, my English teacher gave me the option of writing an essay or making a video. Wow. And you could guess which one I chose. Wow. <laughs> there was no question there. You would think most kids would probably make that choice too. But um, yeah, no, I, so I just had opportunities in high school to, you know, further uh, explore, you know, that, that love of um, creating video and media in general and, uh, you know, follow through with that uh, in college, you know, majoring in mass communication and journalism. And uh, yeah, yeah, that's sort of where it all started for me. Fresno State, they, they have a TV station, don't oh, they? Oh, that's they my do. alma mater, and I also yeah. got my communications degree. Hey, there you go. VA. Yeah. Fresno uh, yeah, Fresno State has a wonderful uh, program there. It's called uh, Media Communications and Journalism now. And yeah, they have a great TV studio, which, which we help manage, in fact, um, as part of an agreement with Fresno State between okay. us and Fresno State. CMAC and Fresno yeah, State. Yeah. Okay, okay. So now I think. Uh, I have Mickey a few has questions. I'm going to start leading out. Sure. Um, so you were telling me a uh, uh, little bit before we got on air that the FCC is coming down with some new regulations that's yeah. going to impact CMAC. It could potentially, yes. Yeah, so I think to kind of help set uh, the background for this, um, I, I can sort of explain a little bit about how uh, CMAC is funded and how we're able to pr provide all of the community media resources uh, you know to yes. uh, the residents here um, so that funding it comes from the cable companies and uh, it, it, it's actually enshrined in this federal law that was passed by Congress in uh, 1984 okay. called the Cable Communications Act mm -hmm. and this law basically says that when a cable company like Comcast for example wants to come to a city or a town and, and do business, yes. uh, they need to run their cables, you know, everybody's homes and businesses. Right. And so they do that using publicly owned infrastructure. So okay. utility poles that may be owned by the city or town or yes. trenches in the ground that may be owned by cities or towns. And these are commonly referred to as public rights of way. And so in exchange for allowing the cable company to, to use this publicly owned infrastructure, they have to pay what's called a franchise fee. Mm -hmm. so basically a fee to, to do business. Yes. And uh, part of this franchise fee uh, comes to uh, the cities uh, earmarked for providing community media resources. Um, and so it's part of that funding that comes to CMAC so that we can do what we do. Okay, so it sounds like part the city itself is part of Yes. Providing the citizens some type of yeah, communication this, media. This uh, Cable Communications Act, yeah, the, the whole idea was, you know, in the late 60s, early 70s, when cable TV was becoming a thing, um, you know, some very forward thinking people recognized that what we're seeing is the beginning of sort of the globalization of media. Um, no longer would you be watching the local news, but you could be watching, you know, 24 hour cable news. Right. Right. Um, and we would be losing something by losing that local information source. Mm -hmm. um, and, and it's very forward thinking for the time that there should be a, a place on this private cable network that's being created for local information and for local people to have access right. to having their own channel and having the resources to be able to create their own media. Okay. Uh, and so that's where it sort of came from. And, and uh, it's still relevant today, um, you know, 40 years later, 50 years later. Mm -hmm. And so as a nonprofit, this is what you get, and we, you know, as, as, as opposed to pay for. Yeah, and in, in most communities, um, you know, because every big city has uh, cable services, uh, they receive these funds. And, and the model sort of around the United States is that the city, um, contracts with a nonprofit organization to provide these services because as the city they're not necessarily uh, equipped to run a community media center right. so they have right. a nonprofit do it and so we're the nonprofit that was created here in Fresno and we have an agreement with the cities of Fresno and Clovis to you know receive those funds and then funnel them back out to the community and and there's a, a variety of ways we do that one is is having this community media center here where people can use and use the studio and learn how to uh, create different forms of media through workshops and, and just having access to equipment. So is there ever a limit? I mean, does, okay, so out of this, 
group of time, I guess, or box of time that we're given, is it all to be for community? I notice that we do, yeah, we do uh, government, we do, yes. it's broken down in sec sec sectors, top, right? Right, so, you know, in the Communications Act, it's defined as uh, public education and government access channels. So okay. PEG, you know, PEG, you might hear those kind mm -hmm. of terms thrown around. Um, and so, yeah, there's often in communities, there's a public access channel, there's an education access channel, and a government access channel. Um, and in some places, those are all managed by the same nonprofit. Sometimes the city decides they want to manage the government channel, but they'll have, you know, maybe the school district will manage the education channel. Maybe a, sure. a nonprofit will manage public access. But, but here, we're doing all three. And that's sort of, you know, the model, the preferred model right. across the United States is to have a nonprofit handle all three areas of So are of we access. supposed to get X number of hours uh, dedicated towards government and X for public access? We don't look at it that way. Okay. Yeah. Uh, we, we try to just have a pot of resources that everybody from those sectors, public education and government, can share and, and have access to. Okay. Yeah. Okay. And CMAC runs off of our tongue, but CMAC stands for? So yeah, CMAC stands for Community <laughs> Media Access Collaborative. Collaborative. And it, it's kind of a mouthful, which is why we just say CMAC, yeah. <laughs> CMAC is easy to remember. Exactly, yeah, yeah it's catchy. <laughs> so, uh, but to, yeah, to, to get to your question about what's happening with the FCC right now, so, so that funding that comes to us, um, you know, after, it's, it's 2019 now, so it's mm -hmm. been almost 35 years since this Cable Act was passed, and, and all of a sudden the FCC is looking at changing things. They wanna say, uh, they wanna place a value on the three channels that we receive, mm -hmm. um, and say, you know, on the commercial market, if we're gonna sell a channel to Disney or MTV, mm -hmm. you know, maybe that channel's worth a million dollars. So let's say that channel's worth a million dollars. We have three channels, that's three million dollars. Right. So they wanna take the money that they owe to the cities and deduct that three million dollars from it. Essentially putting cities in the United States, uh, across the United States, in this sort of uh, pickle situation where they have to choose between do we want channels or do we want the franchise fees that we're owed uh, for using our, our public infrastructure. And, it, and it's really not what the Cable Act intended. Um, no. The fee was for using, you know, the public rights of way, and the channels yes. were in addition to that. It was not one or the other. Right. It was both. Well, what triggered that thinking, though? I mean, the the cable happened? lobby. Oh, the cable, <laughs> yeah. Cable so there's lobby. the 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 there's the NTCA, which is a national lobbying organization that represents Comcast, Verizon, you know, all the big cable companies. And, you know, from, our pers from someone's outward perspective, it could look like the cable industry is hurting. Um, you know, less and less people are subscribing to cable TV now. They're watching uh, over the Internet. And so it's oh, it could be perceived that they're losing money. Okay. In reality, cable companies aren't losing money. Um, oh, good. Cable TV might be less profitable, but the Internet... Is more profitable than ever. That's in what in I fact, right. cable companies are some of the most profitable corporations in the world, um, and and yet so they're they're looking at this, uh, and this FCC in particular has been very clear that they're all about uh, deregulation. They want to make it easier for right. these companies to do business, and right. so they just see this uh, having to give this money for for peg access as just a, you know. A, a harmful obligation, uh, and it would be a lot easier for cable companies to compete and do business across the United States if they weren't burdened by having to give this money to local communities. Um, well, are we which causing is, extra work for them, or I mean, it's politics? Depends on who you ask. <laughs> <laughs> okay, that's a good question. Depends on who you ask, and yeah. that means you mean when you say that the cities or the FCC or. The people that exactly. are exactly voting. Yeah, yes. if you, if you ask the cable companies, maybe they do see it as a burden, but is it really? You know, uh, probably not. But again, it, it depends on your perspective. Okay. It could be a few eyes to dot and T's to cross. You know, from and... our perspective, they're very profitable companies. They're, they're probably not hurting. Mm -hmm. uh, and and look at the good 
that this money is doing in communities across the United States, right. especially now, again, with you know, uh, media consolidation and, and online news information, you know, you know, you're seeing newspapers and small TV stations across the United States close right. and creating these news deserts in area where, um, you know, you can only get your news from the big metropolitan area. And uh, Look, you have the satellite. Yeah, and PEG access allows even small communities to have their own little source of, of information. And, and so it's really the last bastion of local news across the United States. And, and isn't that worth the small amount of money that the, the cable companies have to pay? Mm -hmm. And even more importantly is um, this is not what Congress intended when they passed the Cable Act. Uh, uh -oh. It was supposed to be uh, money for using public rights of way and the channels. So, and so now they're trying to go back and change the rules after 35 years. So is it our representatives? Do we need to write letters? Do we need to yeah. say something? Or? So, so the FCC sort of proposed this rule change back in uh, last summer around that time. And, and the Alliance for Community Media, which is a, a national mm -hmm. organization that we belong to, mm -hmm. uh, that is sort of like the lobbying group for community media in Washington, D.C., uh -huh. they submitted comments uh, along with uh, other organizations such as NATOA, which represents local governments, uh, mainly government channels. Um, they've submitted comments. We submitted comments to the FCC, uh, letting them know that you know, we, we think this is not a, a good move. You know, this is not what Congress intended when they passed the Cable Act, you know, 35 years ago. Mm -hmm. um, and But what people can do out there, people who are watching this and you know, want to help and think that community media is important is, right. you know, at this point, they can call their local uh, congressmen or senators um, and express to them, you know, how they feel about community media and that it's important to them. Uh, because what we're trying to do is have our, our local senators and congressmen uh, contact the FCC and, uh, and apply this pressure uh, and let them know that this matters, uh, that this is an important in an issue. So. Do we have too many special interest groups that are opposed? They want, they want to get out of this deal? I mean, what's going on? Do we have any <laughs> statistics? or? So uh, in regards to what? Well, the p who's... Uh, well, the cable companies are promoting to, to sever the relationship. Right. So do we have other special inter interest groups? Uh, oh, sure. Yeah. On? Yeah. The, uh, on, oh, our side, again, right? on our side. Mm -hmm. Yeah, it's, it's very one-sided. <clears throat> um, oh. Before the comment period at the FCC closed, uh, I think there was something like over 3,000 comments, um, you know, on our side. It's supporting mm -hmm. community media. Mm -hmm. And really... Uh, the only people who are in favor of doing this are the cable companies. That, right. That, that's pretty much it. You know, it's okay. it's okay. very very one-sided. Yeah. Okay. This well, is not something that unions can get behind. Uh, if you have sure employee a union union's going to be impacted by if you were to go away. Uh, um, if, well, uh, uh, yeah. Specifically, I, I'm not aware of any uh, employee union in this industry in, in community media. Yeah. Uh, but I would think it would be important to um, the organizations that we serve, that we help. Um, you know, and those could be faith-based groups. You know, those could be uh, other nonprofits. Mm -hmm. um, they could just be individuals. They could be schools. You know, mm -hmm. they could be other government agencies. Well, for Fresno, I mean, it would really be harmful. It's a yeah. growing city, and a lot of people depend on CMAC to get that basic. I mean, I talked to a gal today during lunch hour. She's a Kiwanis uh, president for the Clovis area. And she goes, oh, well, CMAC was out um, filming the parade. And, and I said, yeah, that's what they yeah. like to do, or the big, mm -hmm. you know, like the sports. And we and feel the like parades. we're just All getting over. started. Yeah. You know, it's, there have been organizations like CMAC in other cities, uh, like I said, since the late 60s, early 70s, mm -hmm. when cable became a thing. Uh, unfortunately, it didn't really take hold here until just recently. You know, we, we opened our community media center in 2012. so. Compared to some other folks in other cities, we're a relatively young organization, and we just see such huge potential for the good impact that we could have on the mm -hmm. community going forward. So we just want to be around to make that happen. So calling on the community, a good place to start is to write the letters to your representative. Absolutely. But locally, um, how can they get involved, um, either online or like um, 
when you do, is, is a CMIC able to do a public service announcement? Yeah, so we the, the video that you saw earlier, we've been running that, and that was made by one of our colleagues uh, mm -hmm. on the East Coast, a community mm -hmm. media center there, which is really great, and had an interview with uh, Senator Ed Markey from Massachusetts, who is a really strong supporter of community media uh, across the United States. And you know, there's already 14 senators and, and 22 representatives who've written letters to oh, uh, you know okay. the FCC chairman uh, in support of community media. So that's really good, and we're just looking to have this movement grow across the country. Okay. And, 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 and presidential do. candidates, you might right. want to. Yeah. Um, right. You want to yeah. get at one, them. <laughs> one of them is a senator from California, Kamala Harris. Yes, right. Right. Yeah, right. 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 So her. yeah, we, we have colleagues you know who are, are working on getting the word out, and you know I've been happy to speak with our local representatives here, and hoping uh, you know within the next few weeks here to have letters from from a couple folks. You know I do a lot of community events. I don't ever see CMAC having an information booth. We get around, yeah. It's hard to be everywhere. Oh, sure. But, but with our small staff, right? Sure. But yeah, we, we try to get the word out, and um, you know what's what's really encouraging too is is uh, you know just over the last month uh, we've heard some some progress has been made. You know, I mentioned the fourteen centers and twenty two representatives and and trying to get the word out and right. gather support. Right. right. Um, we're starting to see the effects of that now. Um, you know, the, in what way? So the NTCA, the cable lobby. Mm -hmm. um, has recently, within the last month, made some comments to the FCC uh, that look like they're going to sort of change their tactic. You know, so they Good. may no longer be pursuing this idea of placing a value on the channels and uh -huh. deducting that. Uh, instead, they may just want to limit the amount of channels that they give to each city. Okay. So, for example, we have three channels, but um, in some cities. They could have five or six oh, yes. like or Los seven Angeles. channels. Oh, okay. Mm -hmm. And so they might just say, okay, we're not going to touch the funding, but we're going to limit the amount of channels you can have. Okay. Uh, because maybe they want to use those channels for something else, you know, on their network. Okay. But you know how they say once they start plucking away at something. Yeah. Right. Yeah. But, but we'll be happy if. That's what they're gonna do. And oh, it would be it a really good them. thing if, if that's the, the path they decided to go down. Because whether we have three channels or one channel, it doesn't affect the amount of, of funding we receive. Right. Yeah. Okay. Mm -hmm. Okay. Yeah, and I noticed that. I mean, there are quite a few entities and nonprofits that like coming to CMAC. Oh, and, yeah. and us as members, I mean, we're here learning production skills, which we can go out and use and market. And help other absolutely, yeah. The, companies. Even the potential uh, for the job training is there. You know, mm -hmm. for someone who wants to come here and learn a new skill, sure. you can go out and apply that. Uh, you know, to a, along a new career path if that's what you're aiming to do. Sure, you mm -hmm. can always be retrained, or you can yeah. upgrade your training. Mm -hmm. uh, you might want to do a podcast. Maybe you don't <laughs> know it until yeah. you get over here. Yeah. Right, right. It could yeah. be any a dozen things you learn here. And with with more and more. Uh, things happening over the internet and that being an important thing for businesses. Um, you know, really in any business industry, having these media skills are going to be beneficial. Somebody on staff has to yeah. know what they're doing. Yeah, and so us being a place where you can come and, and learn how to do those skills and apply them, I just think, yeah, it's very important. And you're right. Fresno is just getting started. I mean, yeah. Uh, really, just going. right? The population is bigger, <laughs> but uh, people are getting more in tune with the advancements with the social media. I mean, we have ne ne Netflix films sure. doing the documentaries, getting into competition, and you got streaming. And uh -huh. there's, there's just so much need in this community too, mm -hmm. you know. And you know, we primarily serve Fresno and Clovis, you know, the city limits. But right. I mean, gosh, you look just outside the Centro Valley in general, uh, needs so much help. In, in terms of economic development, and and this can be a small piece of that, you know. Mm -hmm. oh, I so, think as huge. a member, we're all pro uh, com, uh, CMAC. But let me ask you this: Can the public? Um, they don't have to be involved in other than become a member. Yeah. How about that? Just be a member. Don't take any classes. Don't have to be obligated. Absolutely. Yeah. If if Membership. you just want to support um, our mission and what we're doing and what we you know, what our values are, what we stand for, and what we're trying to achieve, 
you can just become a member and, and or donate any amount of money. It doesn't have to be a fifty dollar membership. If you wow. have the ability to give more, that would be, that'd be great. Three <laughs> hundred. But yeah, being, becoming a member is one way to to give back. And uh, you know, if you want to take advantage of the workshops that we offer and access to equipment and facilities, that that's great. Yeah. Do you think maybe later on we we would. Uh, rent equipment or would that be helpful? I or? think there's a lot of possibilities, yeah, for ways that we can generate revenue. Um, because, you know, um, as I mentioned, less and less people are subscribing to cable TV. Mm -hmm. And so, uh, you know, as that happens, um, our funding source decreases. And so we're going to, either way, we're going to need to diversify and find other ways to you know, support organizations in our community that is also supporting us at the same time. Yeah, so you a know. give and take, I mean, for all of us, yeah. because it's a good source. Now, do we have object fibers here? Um, for, for what purpose? We do have fiber in this uh, building. No, but yeah. for the city, do I, I know when I was in Carlsbad, they were in, installing all that. Is okay, that, so you mean like... Um, like a municipal broadband or community Through, broadband? Right, throughout. Yeah, I know that's something the city of Fresno is has been working on, and mm -hmm. uh, and they've put out you know uh, requests for proposals for people who might want to help build that out. But you do see that in a lot of other uh, larger communities that um, rather than rely on uh, a Comcast or an AT and T for providing internet service. Uh, the city itself uh, provides a form of municipal broadband access, mm -hmm. and that can be really beneficial in you know, low-income areas where they may not be able to afford to right. have yeah. internet access. Yeah, yeah because we have Lee small Bale. cities yeah. that, that are not even built out yet. I mean, or look in, at Mendota, Fireball, sure. all of those cities. They, sure. Right. Yeah. Right. So that would help here, wouldn't yeah. it? Yeah. And there's yeah. I mean, we, even though we're primarily focused on media production and creation, I mean, we're still uh, our values very much align with with those of creating more broadband access. Um, and there's a, a group out at Fresno State called the uh, that's housed in the Economic Development Department at Fresno State called the Regional Broadband Consortium, and it's a group of mm -hmm. uh, companies that mm -hmm. are are trying to create more broadband access within the Central Valley, mm -hmm. because it's just it's becoming as important as you know uh, a telephone service. You know, back in the in the day, um, if you couldn't afford to have access to a telephone, there was a lot of things you couldn't do. You couldn't participate in society, mm -hmm. and it's becoming that way with the internet too mm -hmm. now. You know, to apply for right. a job right. or to just have access to information, you online. need to get online. Well, and no. if you can't go to your local library to do that, I mean, where are you going to go? Yeah. Well, the right. problem I think is having it in your home or having it in your pocket with a mm -hmm. smartphone is, is yes. so important. So right. important. So you have a website uh, address to give them when they want to go online and donate. Yeah, so uh, you can find uh, us at cmac.tv, um, and you can watch all of the community programming, including this show, uh, is on cmac.tv. And you know we have a Roku app and the Apple TV app. So if you want to watch programming that way, maybe if you don't subscribe to cable TV at home, mm -hmm. there's still lots of ways to to watch uh, the great programming that's being created here. Well, we as members, what do you think? What can we do to help? Yeah, so you know we're we're hopeful this situation with the FCC is going to go our way. Right. Um, but specifically with that issue, what you can do is you can uh, go to our website and uh, click on a little button that uh, says Save CMAC, and or you can go to uh, this this URL that I'm about to give you. It's uh, bit.ly slash Save CMAC. Mm -hmm. So well, say it again. Bit dot L Y slash save C Mac. So I'm gonna do that. Uh, if you and if you go there, it's gonna direct you to a uh, petition that the Alliance for Community mm -hmm. Media has set up, mm -hmm. and you fill out that petition and like your address, and it it can determine who your Congress people are, and it's gonna automatically send a message of support uh, to your Congress people. Do we have to have a certain number like? 175,000, a million signatures, a million. I think there's there's a it's nearing 10,000 signatures right now, um, and you don't you don't have to have a certain number of signatures. The more the merrier. But every every time you click sign, you know it's going to notify your Congress people. And if you want to go a step further, it doesn't hurt to call your local Congress person 
in a lot of uh, their offices. They have local um, district offices, people who are happy to talk to you about any issue you might right, have. Right, call um, Sacramento. Yeah, yeah you know, you, if it's uh, our state senators, you know, they even have offices uh, here in Fresno. Right. So we're going to be uh, kind of worried about this for how much longer, do you think? Well, um, we don't know until, uh, be because the FCC hasn't, doesn't sort of have a schedule uh, of, of what they're going, what's going to be on their agenda uh, in the near term. But uh, our understanding is that they're probably going to try to tackle this issue by the end of the year. Yeah. Okay. So the FCC so meets, six months and... they meet every month and, you know, their agenda comes out and we can see what's on the agenda. And, so for now, we know it's not mm -hmm. on the June agenda, mm -hmm. but we're just going to keep checking each month. Do they put it to a vote, or they just the FCC their board makes yes. that decision? Yeah, How the, many F people? the FCC is comprised of um, well, so so whoever's whatever party is in control, of the White House. Mm -hmm. um, so right now, Donald Trump's Republican, mm -hmm. and so the FCC has a Republican majority. So that's always how it works. There's three Republicans and two Democrats. Five, okay. Yeah. So when, when it gets on the agenda, will uh, CMAC be personally going to uh, speak uh, from the public? Uh, uh, question well, and answer? Yeah, we, we don't quite have the, the funds to be able to send me or somebody to Washington, D.C. Uh, uh, How much do you need? <laughs> Help. How but we, we will definitely that? be represented there by the Alliance for Community Media. Oh, good. Yeah, which Just is the, the lobbyist. The national organization we belong to. Right. And yeah, they represent 400. CMAX, you know, across the United States. They're, they're a really gr good group of people. Uh, and NATOA as well, the group that represents local governments. Um, so there will be adequate representation okay. at the FCC for sure. Okay. <laughs> now, CMAX is just covering how many square miles? Yeah, so our, our funding comes from the cities of Fresno and Clovis. Mm -hmm. And so our, our primary charge is to serve the cities of Fresno and Clovis. Okay. Although we have people, you know, from Sanger or Hanford, Lemoore, you know, outside the area who become members, and that's okay. You know, okay. anybody can be a, become a member, okay. but it's easier for some people to get down to our location than others. Okay. Would it be good? I mean, even if the FCC goes the other way and just limits the channels, yeah. would it be good to forward think and try to create a little bit of a fund so that you can start to grow into those other areas of Central California? Because we're not yeah. the only city and Clovis isn't the only city. Right. We have other cities. Yeah, absolutely. Um, so uh, right now our channels uh, can be seen in those other cities. Um, so if you're, whether you're a Comcast or at t subscriber, it sort of varies, but uh, pretty much from the county of Merced um, down south to the county of Tulare, um, if you have one of those cable services, it's likely that you can see our channels. Okay. Yeah. Does that include UVerse? Because yes. Yeah. AT&T yeah. Uvers. Oh, okay. Yep. Oh, you did say AT&T. Well, wouldn't it yeah. be nice to have like a little satellite office like this, a mini me? That would. A be, mini me. That would be great. Yeah, that would be great. And, and what the tough part becomes um, that, uh, you know, so our funding is essentially 1% of what the cable company uh, makes within the uh, a city, city limits. Okay. So in Fresno and Clovis, where the population sizes are, are quite large uh -huh. and you have mm -hmm. a larger base of cable subscribers, that 1% one, 1 can represent a, a decent size uh, right. of money. Right. But if you go to, you know, Kingsburg, you have a lot smaller population. And then of that population, how many are subscribing to cable? Even right. less. Right, mm -hmm. right, right. Um, and so the, the, the money that those cities could provide mm -hmm. um, is probably not enough to have a building, have a facility. Well, is there a way to, like, associate with the libraries or something like that? Oh, I'm, to... I'm, I'm sure there's lots of ways. Yeah. yeah. And, and we would love to I explore that further if there's... People out there in those communities who who want to see this happen, you know, mm -hmm. in their city or town, we're always help, uh, always glad to help share information and how we did it and how what our get story started, yes. and how okay. to get started. Yeah. Okay. I mean, yeah. I'm just thinking the big picture. Going, okay, how can you associate so Absolutely. that you can because yeah, I just you're teaching a... students. You're, I mean, you're doing. Let everybody know right. you're, you're you're out there with a lot of. Share what you do. Yeah, so we, we have lots of different programs, and uh, you know one of them is is the community media services that we provide. So that's you know uh, having 
uh, access to uh, these facilities that we're in right now, mm -hmm. um, you know, where we have a studio, uh, editing bays, uh, classrooms, meeting rooms, uh, and you know, if, if you're a member of CMAC, you can take a workshop and learn how to do that and then have access to these resources. So mm -hmm. every yes. single week, you know, we have a workshop going on on a different subject. Yes. You know, probably every two or three days, there's some sort of an right. event happening right. within this building. Uh, yes. So there's lots of ways to come down and, and right. participate and get involved. And get um, on the mailing list and, uh, if, yeah. and tell somebody. Yeah, go to, you, know, you can go on our somebody. website and sign up for our newsletter and get that every week and sort of stay up to date with what we're doing and mm -hmm. you know, follow us on uh, Facebook and Instagram and Twitter right. and all the social right. media platforms uh, to hear what's going on. But you know, outside this building, like you mentioned, we do a lot of youth media training. So uh, you know, we have a mobile production vehicle, which is basically all the equipment that's in our studio control room here is inside of a 24-foot uh, sprinter van. Mm -hmm. right. And right. that van can go around to the different schools. And in fact, next Friday, uh, June 14th, at uh, 7 o'clock, I think, I'm going to get that wrong, <laughs> you can watch on our channel the city-county all-star football game. So we're partnering at all the proceeds for that benefit, the Boys and Girls Club of Fresno County. Uh, wow. So if you want to come out and watch it in person, that's great. Buy right. a ticket. It's going to benefit the Boys and Girls Club. But if you can't, for whatever reason, uh, you can watch on CMAC. Mm -hmm. And uh, it's all the you know all-stars from the city-county schools that are playing. So we thought it would be fun wow. to let's get yes. our all-star all video students uh, yes. from the various schools that we work with. Let's get them together and be the video crew that broadcast this game. So yeah. that's that's going to be really that's great. That's a biggie. Yeah. yeah. So that we do sounds fun. we do stuff like that all the time with our mobile unit uh, going out to the various schools and with football and, games and doing football mm -hmm. games yeah, and right. basketball and Swimming. and even some you know parades. Uh, so it's not just all sports. Well, but, last yeah, week you did uh, the gay parade. What is it? The yeah, the, the Pride? Rainbow, uh, Rainbow Pride, Pride Parade mm -hmm. of the yes. Power District. We were able right. to do that, and we've done the. Chinese New Year parade in the past. And oh, we uh, have Juneteenth on this coming, uh, no, not this Saturday, the following Saturday. Are we yeah. filming the 15th, that? Yeah. The 15th. Anita and I are the out there. The parade is at there. Mm -hmm. And that's what's great. You know, we have a small staff here at CMAC, and we try to do a lot of things, but we have a whole lot of members. And so mm -hmm. if we can't be everywhere, it's great that if one Volunteers. of our members has a specific interest or yeah. passion uh, about a, an organization or something that's happening in the community, they can go yes. out and make right. sure that it's documented mm -hmm. and, and covered. And then Edna covered a Juneteenth last year, and she'll mm -hmm. cover it this hey, year. And <laughs> I'll be a vendor. And then we just one happy family on the 15th of June. Awesome. Awesome. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, but people need to understand. I mean, this is not really free. I, we need to help and be involved and, and keep this alive because it gives a lot of opportunity, not just only to organizations, but as you said, we're a growing city. We're starting to uh, bring in other people and this uh, not only fresno is growing itself it's it's getting it's changing absolutely it's yeah. changing it's becoming a modern fresno and that means modernization more money city. Huh? it's becoming a metro it's there you go building. and that's a lot um, of work and a lot more infrastructure to build it is and, and this is kind of a place to to help like you said it's very valuable. Sure. So please, people, go yeah. to that <laughs> bit.ly slash, slash uh, save, save CMAC. CMAC. Mm -hmm. yeah. Yeah. yeah, and write your letters, call, text, however you can get Absolutely. a hold of your Congress or Assembly person, yeah, right? Let, let your elected uh, representatives know how important this is to you. Yeah, mm -hmm. we okay. appreciate it. And we got to yeah. keep CMAC alive. And become a member. You yeah. Know? Yeah. That helps a lot, <laughs> right? Yeah, sure. I mean, where can you send uh, your child? That's uh, I had talked to two fellows last night, and one's in Lamore area. His mom says, "I'll drive you all the way over here for twenty-five dollars. I don't care. Yeah. You're look at what you're learning. This is a gold mine. This is what you want to get involved." Yeah, with. I, I, you know, when I was that kid in high school, or. Uh, you know, running around my backyard with my family's video camera, I would have killed to have something like this that I could come to right, and be involved right, with. Right, right. And so it's just, you know just such an honor for me to be working here now and and making that a reality for the kids yeah. out there now. Yeah, and right. you provide that leadership. I mean, Kyle, he's so well. I, his background alone. Oh yeah, we've right. everyone here on staff is so great. Uh, you know, here to help you. Right. You know, achieve what you're right. trying to achieve right. and, and mm -hmm. teach you and mm -hmm. learn and. 
I remember yeah. when my daughter was still in high school, it was like, what can I load her up on? All the skills that she needs to have as she go out into the world. So in, in ninth grade or tenth grade, you're going to do something, something and see what, what uh, sticks. And from somewhere along the line, I learned I wasn't very ear savvy, but I like visual. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Not just because they have four eyes, but... Uh, yeah. <laughs> no, I'm there with you. Yeah. Uh -huh. Well, we're all different, but it's true. Yeah, you, the things that your children or you have about. an interest mm -hmm. Mm -hmm. And, and, and that helps others. I mean, we learn from each other. Absolutely. Well, that's it. Spread yeah. the word. So, here we go. Remember, CMAC. And it is a mouthful, too. Everyone says, what is that? C-M-A-C. Yeah. Yeah, just C-M-A-C. You... Yeah. C-M-A-C. Yeah. 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 <laughs> and get on that line and save C-M-A-C, or just become a member, or right. donate. Yeah. Give Brian a call. Yeah. Happy to What's... talk anytime, give you a tour, <laughs> show you around. Yeah, come over to the building. Yeah. And it's beautiful mm -hmm. and modern. Mm -hmm. Come oh, over here and have you a know, good look. You, you really... You can't understand what we're all about until you step foot in the building. And I hear that from people all the time. They walk in, and it's like, I didn't realize it was this. That's you know, right. I had a whole idea, other idea of what it was until I actually saw it for myself. That's well, right. You can't judge a book by the cover, the right. outside. <laughs> That's right. That's You're right. You're still thinking Fresno B or whatever oh, it used well, to be here. Just yeah. show up on yeah. Art Hop Night and go to the Yo Market, and yeah. we'll give you a tour. <laughs> Doors are open. <laughs> Come up and see Kyle's uh, Lowdown Show. That's a lot of fun. Art Hop's a great night to be in downtown. Yeah, mm -hmm. lots of activity. Oh, you sh if, you, mm -hmm. if you weren't out last night, you missed it. <laughs> That's you right. It. Oh, it we was. had a little live stream, and we had every, band. All the ladies yeah, through dancing. Yes, was the name that band? The band was called A Fire on the Mountain. A Fire on the Mountain. And they were great. Yes, yes. <laughs> yes. Okay. So. Well, thank you very much, Brian. Yeah, thank for you for having nice, me. Uh, I've, been, I've been here over a year or two, but <laughs> now I know more than I knew there you go. before yesterday. I Information guess. is a hundred percent, right? Yep. Yes. Okay. And let's everyone, now you know we have to keep our information flow out there. We don't want to get cut off, so come on down, donate, become a member, take a tour. We're here to help. Ask one of us. Mickey will help. I I'll help. Be here. We're all, all of us are helping each other, so I appreciate this. Oh, by the way, this is Father's Month, so every, Month, yeah. every program that we have from Yo Soy Neighborhoods Fresno, mm -hmm. we have men. Our focus will be men. We, we're going to have some... Uh, Apprentice information. Hopefully, we asked the, uh, the police department about the uh, fire uh, firearms getting ready for Fourth of July. So tune okay. in. We have okay. a lot of interesting stuff for the fellas and uh, the ladies as well. <laughs> <laughs> and Father's Day so, is the June sixteenth. That's right. Don't forget. So thank you for tuning in today. And now you know more about CMAC and in this tall building, and okay. about Brian as well. Yeah. Thank you. Mm -hmm. and, and let's take care of that FCC. Put yeah. them on notice. <laughs> That's Put right. Put us on notice. They can't play with us. <laughs> That's right. <laughs> so thank you for tuning in. And, and we'll what's... see you next week. That's it. Bye-bye. <laughs> Bye-bye. It's been fun. <laughs>